By now, I know a lot of you guys are so used to cruising and looking for ways to fully enjoy your time on board. But there are certainly some overrated advice out there that I think you guys should definitely avoid. And if you want to ensure both that you can have a fun time on your cruise and get your full money's worth next time, then in today's video, I'm going to share with you some of the most overrated cruise tips that I think you should definitely avoid for your next time going on board. But just before we begin, I am asking you kindly to become a supporter of the channel by clicking that subscribe button below as my goal will be to continue bringing you the valuable tips, tricks and advice you will need for a successful vacation. So please don't hesitate to subscribe if you want to keep seeing new videos like this weekly. All right, let's continue. Now, one of the main things I hear a lot amongst cruisers, and I don't necessarily blame them, is because they well and truly could be following the advice of cruise influencers and other content creators. But being a crew member, I know how much this specific advice is so overrated, and I am talking about going on cruises and buying a beverage package for unlimited drinks. Bear in mind that this cruise advice isn't really for cruisers that pay the extra to go on luxury or all-inclusive cruises cruises because those cruises you wouldn't have to worry about the price of drinks since it will all be included but the passengers that this tip will be overrated for are the casual cruisers who aren't necessarily there for a drinking experience or for those who don't even drink a lot because for me why should i feel forced or encouraged to buy the drink package when i wouldn't be much of a drinker myself the real thing is that having a drink package in itself basically forces you to try and get your money's worth back. You will be in a peer pressure moment just by knowing you have a drinks package to take advantage of. I know a lot of these unlimited drink packages can be really really pricey and they are not cheap at all. But let me ask you this, what are you gonna do on the night after you were wasted from trying to overcompensate and justify having a drink package? This can go really wrong for you trying to drink to the limit. And first of all, there's so many restrictions as well that follow having a drink package such as not being allowed to share your drink package even if it is someone you are sharing a cabin with. It doesn't sound all too logical to me because of this either. And better yet, depending on how many stops your cruise will take, why not go ashore and just participate in drinking at the cruise port instead? It will most likely be cheaper than on board and there will be no obligations for you to overpay for any unlimited drinks packages. The thing you should understand is that passengers rarely can drink enough to justify having a drinks package anyway that is unlimited in the first place. And when a guest gets completely wasted from drinking too much, no matter how good it sounds to have a drink package, they generally avoid drinking or drinking as much the next day on board. So you see, in my humble opinion, I don't think anyone can drink to the limit of a drink package every single night. But if you are one of those heavy drinkers, then maybe having a drink package will be exciting for you. Otherwise, I'd skip the drink package and occasionally grab a drink shoreside whenever the cruise ship docks. Now, the next overrated tip I seem to can't escape from is hearing all the time how much you should opt into paying for the onboard Wi-Fi packages. The thing is that the internet service is really costly whether you are a crew member or a guest on board. And I must admit, it can be fairly cheaper for crew members, but it does take a huge chunk off our monthly payslip. There are some times at the end of a contract, we will see how much we spend on internet services as crew members. And let me tell you, this can easily overflow into the thousands of dollars every contract. And I myself can just imagine how much the cost could be for guests on board the cruise. I know that for the guests, the cost can sometimes be justifiable depending on how much you use the internet. But based on my knowledge, there are ever only a few passengers who would fall under this exception. Otherwise, you are on a cruise to enjoy your time in that moment, far away from any outside interaction other than having to visit the cruise ports. But you are supposed to be in a free-spirited mindset once you set your foot on board a cruise ship and not to be reminded of what's happening outside of that. When you get on a cruise and you opt for internet services, just know you can be especially spending hundreds of dollars for your package and even more based on how frequently you are using the internet. One thing that the crew on board cruise ships rely on the most when it comes to this is being able to get off the ship at the cruise ports. Why? Well, they do this so that they can go ashore and access free internet at some nearby venue. That is not in most cases far away from the ship. And if I want to be fair with my viewers that are watching, then this would be the best option for you guys as well. Because you being a guest on board cruise ships, you will have more time to spend ashore than even the crew members. Which means you will have a lot more time to find a place that can offer internet access whether for free or just require you to spend a little money for either the drinks, food or any other products. And trust me, this will be way cheaper than having any internet package on board. The cost and logistics in difference compared to shoreside internet versus onboard is like comparing apples to peaches. The Wi-Fi internet will be significantly 
faster shore side and even cheaper. The downside is that you would have to find a spot and wait for the ship to dock at a cruise port, whereas onboard internet will be available with you for the time you are on board. But you will have to face the challenges of slow internet and even worse, the high cost. Now onto the next overrated tip that most cruise passengers should definitely avoid is one that is far too long under the stigma of not being a good cabin option to have. And this overrated tip to avoid is the one where they say you shouldn't book your cabins near any cruise ship elevators. Why? Well, in the earlier days of cruising before now, rooms used to be less insulated and noise proof. So the stigma arrived that rooms near elevators would be subjected to hearing a lot of noise all time of day just because of the foot traffic of having everyone going to and from the elevators and walking past your room. You couldn't predict what type of other guests who you would be sharing that same deck with. So it was always a cautious advice to avoid such cabins because loud children could be on your deck going to and from their rooms or even noisy adults after they had a few drinks or two. But now in the modern days of cruising, Room noise cancellation features have pretty much improved significantly and it is now a more growing trend to learn that the overrated tip of not booking cabins near elevators is quickly fading away because you can now expect the best cabins to be the ones really close to the elevator. And let me tell you why this is. As cruise ships get bigger and bigger, the decks you are staying on will become longer and longer, meaning longer walks to any nearby elevators and having to walk such distance to and from elevators can seem like a chore in itself. Especially if all you want to do is run down to your room to get something or even put something down so that you can continue the rest of your time on board or have to run out to the cruise port. It is clear now that passengers shouldn't really avoid booking cabins near elevators anymore because there's now more pros and cons than it was in the past. Okay, so now that we've known that so far pertaining to overrated tips, is there any other tips that would fall into this category? Well, to be truthful, based on how you see it, almost every tip given when it comes to cruise ships can in somewhat some way be classified as overrated. But I want you guys to be mindful of this next tip that I will mention. Because based on your travel expertise, whether you're a seasoned or first time cruiser, your perception of this next tip might be different. But honestly to me, coming from a crew member's perspective of what I see frequently on board, nobody really cares if your cabin has a balcony or not. Yes, yes, I get it. You hear it all the time that a balcony cabin is way better than having to book an indoor cabin. And you are promised that booking a cabin with a balcony is one that will make for a better experience on board. I hate to break it to you, but not only are you paying more for an expensive room, your experience on board outside of your cabin is not dictated by whether or not your room has a balcony. Besides, who actually goes on a cruise to spend majority of their time in their rooms anyway? At this point, I can't stress it enough. Having a room with or without a balcony shouldn't really be a massive deciding factor to look at. I work on ships and I must say that majority of the guests will only spend a few hours in their rooms and the rest of the time is for them to go out and explore and have fun on the ship. If you are so worried that others will be judgmental just because you booked an indoor cabin, for your own peace of mind, the crew really doesn't care what room you booked. We are all there to provide the same service whether you paid more or less for a room. Plus, other guests are there for a good time and not really there to flex their bank account muscles. Well, I can't really speak for everyone on that though. It's just that I don't really see that happening too often. But yeah. Don't let anyone pressure you into thinking that you have to book a cabin with a balcony and that your experience will be far different when compared to others on board. Don't get me wrong, I have nothing against booking a balcony cabin and if that's your thing, then that's just your thing. I'm just telling you that it's pretty much overrated, but it's still nice to have either way. I have nothing bad to say if you prefer to book a balcony cabin, I mean why would I? Having a balcony cabin can be a plus of course, but it's not what really makes your experience. So next time you hear crew's advice pushing for you to book a balcony cabin, just know coming from a crew to you, the experience doesn't change much. There's only a few disadvantages that can be overlooked easily and if you want to see outside of your cabin, you can always check your stateroom TV or just simply go out to the open deck. Your main priority when you go on board a cruise is to try and enjoy everything that is available to you. If you've enjoyed the information from this video, I am now asking you to leave a like and comment below if there's anything else you would like to add to this list. I'd like to hear what you have to say. Also, watch my next video that you may see here on the screen. It's Anik, your cruise employee, and I'm out.